Ever since Pokemon Card 151 came out, and even in the days leading up to it, I've been following the cards on the Japanese market and on the eBay marketplace. I've noticed a very interesting trend going on, and a lot of people are getting burned because of it. It's something I've noticed over the years, and it always irked me. It's not just to this set, but in this set, it seems way too common, so you've got to check this out. You yourself might be doing eBay all wrong as well and making some mistakes. I'm sure I've made a few. I can even show you a few cards that were a mistake. I wanted to cover some points with you today. And if you have some additional insights, please share with me and share with the rest of us. I'm sure the whole community would appreciate it. You know, I'm not the end all, the be all on buying on eBay, but I am a big fan of it. I do it on a regular basis just for fun and just to research. So today I wanted to just cover a few topics about the buying of specific cards, the hunting for the best deals, and winning auctions. So let's get to it. I know it sounds superly simple, but the main key to the topics today are to know the market value of the card that you're buying. Let's look at some really quick ways that you can figure out what the card's worth and how much you should pay for it. I'm gonna flip you around so we can take a look at a couple websites. I picked a random card today to take a look at. It's the Miriam 238 out of 198 from the Scarlet and Violet base set. It's a card that has tanked since it came out. Uh, it started around 70 bucks and now it's under $20. I think it's kind of undervalued. In fact, I've been thinking about buying some of them at $20, but I'll tell you why I'm not as we look through what this card is worth right now. So the first thing I want to look at is I'm going to scroll down here on TCG Player and I'm going to check off Near Mint because I only want Near Mint cards in my collection. I'm going to look at that lowest price and right now it's 21 bucks from someone who has 55 sales. Uh, you could say maybe add another dollar as you get up to someone like Cardinal Nation here who has more sales, uh, $22. Um, I see that there's 116 listings that are near mint. That's important to note. The next thing I want to look at is the sales history. How fast are these cards selling? I can see today four of them sold, all near mints from $18.50, which is a great price, all the way up to $24. Sometimes just the time of day that you buy is gonna affect the price. Maybe they like that seller more. A lot of times you put these in a cart on TCG Player and you do the optimize. It just might turn out based on shipping and other things that someone with a slightly higher price becomes a better deal. This was a lightly played, so it's lower. Um, let's see, so on the 19th, what is that? 12 were sold. You can keep loading and keep looking back. Over the weekend, um, not a not a ton. About 20, 30 maybe. Uh, I could figure that out if I really wanted to. It's selling. It's not insane. There's not a ton. If 30 sold every day, this would be wiped out. But it is slowly selling. TCG players claiming the market value is 1989. You got to be a little bit careful about that, but it but it's usually pretty good. Again, though, what I like to look at is what's the lowest from someone I'd buy from. It's easily $22. Then I'm going to take this same card. I'm going to cut and paste the card number. I'm going to head on over Miriam with the card number. I'm going to sort on Lois and buy it now and see what we got to work with. It's about the same price. 2108 to be exact from this guy. I'm going to check out these sellers. 1,369 sales, 100% positive. I'd absolutely have no issue buying from this guy. I'm going to zoom in and see what I think. There's some uh, interesting spots here. So if you're looking for a shot at like a PSA 10, you're going to want to take note of stuff like that. If you're putting it in your binder, you might not care. You might care long term if you uh, you know have a medical emergency or got to get out of the hobby for whatever reason, or you just decide to downsize your card collection. Um, you're gonna care. Sometimes a lot of these white things are just little specks of dust and stuff that all these great camera phones we got these days are picking it all up. You can take note of how many there are: 154, 
And when there's a lot on the market, people are gonna have to start dropping their prices because they're just not gonna move. I think it's safe to say that after everything we've seen with this card, between TCG Player and eBay, it's roughly a $20 card. I don't have any problem with that. It's a fantastic card. So now the question is, how much are we willing to pay for it? Because we want a deal. There's a few ways to go about getting that deal and I'll show you a couple of them right now. First of all, we can come down and set a max range. So let's say we want to be alerted for every Miriam card under 18 bucks. That's buy it now. We've got this all set up. We can just save this search. And then every day we're gonna get an email alert whenever that comes up another thing you can do is if if you are happy with this person add it to your watch list they might get sick of waiting and need the money and decide hey i'm just gonna send offers to people so they might send an offer for 18 bucks or even less if you're lucky and i would do that with every single card you're interested in but i personally won't mark these as uh, favorites until I go in and look at them because I don't want it to pop up and then to have to make a decision. If it's a great price, that's the only decision I wanna make. Okay, this guy's gonna sell it plus shipping for you know 18 bucks. I I'm gonna buy it. I don't wanna think, oh, is he a good seller? Uh, does he have positive ratings? I just want to know the price or, you know, also the, the condition of the card. I always make sure the condition's great before I check watching. So I would go through and check them all off that I'm interested in. The second thing that you could do, which I honestly don't do a lot of unless I'm really sure that I want the card. And also, if you went through and did this for a bunch of cards, you're committing to buying them. And that is using the best offer. So let's say... This person allows make offer. I come in here, Cody's collectibles. He's only got 17 sales, which is not great, but it looks like he knows what he's doing. He took pictures of all the corners. I'm not liking that little bend there. It's probably from the factory. Could be from fingers on the edges. I don't know. I want to maximize the value of my card long term. I don't like to take risk. If it's just a complete a set, I usually don't care. So I could come in and make him an offer. Now, I would love to pay $16 to $18 for this card. If I could if I could get it for $16 to $18, I would take it. This guy is probably not going to come down. So what I would do is maybe I would add it to watch list, see what, see what he thinks. If a lot of people aren't adding to watch list because he's already too high, he might make an offer to you. So set up alerts. Add to watch list to get offers made to you and make offers if you're comfortable. And last but not least are to try to win the auctions. So come in here to the auctions, mark any that are low. Again, with the auctions, I like to come in, make sure I'm willing to buy from the person. If it's reasonable, I might go for it anyways. You just gotta remember as the auction time comes up, make sure the card looks good. Make sure you know the the value of the buy and nows at that time, this card could go up or down between now and Sunday. And if you don't know the market value around the time, if I'm really, really interested in a card, I will set an alarm five or so minutes before it ends. And I will do that research really quick that we just talked about. So again, any, any cards with a decent seller, I'm gonna come in, make sure you like it, make sure that you're happy with whether or not it's overcut or not, um, and mark it. Yeah, there it is. Those are all your ways to try to get some deals. Let's talk about auctions. One thing I want to show you, which is kind of crazy, that I've noticed a lot uh, with SV2A, Pokemon card 151. Let's just look at this so that you don't make this mistake yourself. And I've seen it with other auctions as well. Let's go ahead and sort by ending soonest. And we're gonna we're gonna see evidence of this right off the bat. Look at this uh, Dragonair uh, card 82. I'm gonna cut and paste that. For Pokemon card 151, I tend to search only for SV2A and then the card number out of 180 uh, 165. So Dragonair is 182 out of 165. 
14 bids have been made on this. There's still 16 hours left. It's already bid up to 1350. Let's search for that car directly. Let's sort on price plus shipping and buy it now. $6.98. $6.98 shipped. Almost a 99% positive rating for this guy. $6.98. Star Platinum, $7.50. They're paying double in the auction with still 16 hours to go than the lowest buy it now. You see this all the time. You're seeing this so much with Pokemon card 151. You need to know the value. This card is like a $7 card and it will probably drop more. Now, don't don't get me wrong. I absolutely love this card. I bought one. I bought it for 650. I'm not going to get it for a couple weeks. It's got to come from Japan, but I don't care. I ordered it with a few other Japanese cards from Pokemon card 151. You know, Bulbasaur, Venusaur, uh Ivysaur, I had to have them. Uh, I didn't get the really expensive uh, Venusaur yet. I'm waiting for it to come down. But the low value cards, I bought them all for under six bucks. And I bought this Dragonair because I'm a huge fan of Dragonair. And this is just like one of the best artworks ever for Dragonair. Uh, this this thing just looks beautiful. But anyways, I'm getting off topic. So, so yeah, if you come into SV2A, you can see this over and over again. So here we go. Here's another one. Mew, 178.49. I can go and look at the Mew, 205 out of 165. I can almost guarantee it. There'll be one cheaper than 178. 165, 19 plus shipping, 171. So it's not a huge amount cheaper, but the auction isn't even over. People are going to come in. They're going to they're going to see the auction. They're going to FOMO in this next 4 hours from now. 53 people have bid this up. And this guy has no sales history. I see this all the time. It irks me. You think that you wait on an auction, you know, for a few days thinking you're going to get a deal. It has to be less than the buy it now, right? It just has to be. No. People come in, they let their emotions get the best of them. They they don't know the market. And they overbid. And I've made the same mistake before. You've got to know the market value for the card uh, or you're going to overpay. And, it, and it's plain and simple. Uh, and I guarantee you, if you go in through a handful more of these, here's this Squirtle. See, 10 bucks, 13 bids. Buy it now, low, lowest price, 745 out the door from Ma Chan's huge Japanese seller. Almost 12,000 sales. I've bought from this person. Pleasant Trading Shop bought from them, eight bucks. People have already bid it up to $10. They're, they're ruining the deals. They're driving up the market price on these cards. And then the rest of us collectors pay for it because we don't get the deals. Just know the market value and um, you'll be doing better than the other guys. So you wanna win auctions? There's kind of two ways that you can do it. One is by bidding way too much money, getting really close to the buy and now price, and often still getting burned because somebody overbids the buy and now price. You can try to snipe stuff, um, you know, but again, you better know your market value. You better be ready for it. I, I love the auction. Uh, I bought some really cool things that people were just sleeping on. In fact, um, you know, but I could also say that I've gotten better deals in the buy it now that again, people are sleeping on. I bought a Miriam PSA nine for $29 last night. That, that card is beautiful. Not the, not the, the really expensive one, but the, the full art trainer one level down. Uh, it's, I can't show it off to you because I haven't gotten it in the mail yet, but it's a gorgeous card and, um, you know. 29 bucks, PSA 9. I'm super happy to have that in my collection. Uh, I think that people are sleeping on that car right now. I'm thinking about buying five of them, th throwing them in the binder. They're going for 20 bucks each. Uh, again, beautiful card. So sniping, the, here's how I do it. You've got to wait till the last second. You've got to know what you're willing to spend and you've got to plug that number in at the end and you've got to pray that nobody else wants that card for 
of value higher than you or they're sleeping on it. eBay has made it very difficult to snipe. Um, you know, you send in that number, a whole bunch of people are sending in that number at the same time. That The exact second that uh, that auction is ending is not a perfect science. I have a feeling that they're kind of padding it a little bit. And that's why, um, you know, I will put in, I put in high bids that last second and people have bid 20 bucks more than me and all within that last second. So um, again, don't get upset if you lose it. You know, that's why you gotta go in with the value that you're willing to go in. You want a deal, right? You know, I bid on cards all the time just to try to get a deal. And if people are sleeping, they're sleeping. Um, and if they're not, they're not. Oh, another tip. If there's multiples, which happens a lot, multiples of the same item that are ending within the same, you know, 30 seconds to a minute, go for the first one. So many people think that the first one's going to go the highest. No. The first one almost never goes the highest in my experience. I got a Marnie from the Premium Tournament Collection in a PSA 9 for $29. I think there was three in a row all ending at the same time. I got the first one. I knew better. I went for that first one. $29 bucks I got it for. I sniped it. I, I don't even remember what value I put in, but I got it for $29. Maybe I put $40. I don't know. The next two went for like $45 because people think the first one's going to go higher and they you know if they're all within a couple minutes they're going to go for that next one or the one after and or they're going to wait and see what the first one goes for to see if they can get the second or third one cheaper but ebay is such a pain that you know that one minute difference you might completely miss the second auction waiting to find out what the first one went for anyways so my advice is to go for the first one if there's a series which happens a lot with companies like probstein or whatever you know these companies that have they're just selling slab on slab on slab the other thing is to bid on cards that are just super cool looking that you know maybe they're not even super desirable to people but you like them i recently picked up um i picked up thunderous from 2011 Pokemon Black and White series. I love having cards across the different series, uh, you know, from the beginning to now, just to just to look at the difference in the cards, in the hollows, and check them out. I got a Thunderous for thirteen dollars and fifty cents. PSA nine, 2011 Pokemon Black and White Thunderous from Emerging Powers Full Art. These are the early full arts. Is Thunderous a hugely popular Pokemon? No, but it's a it's a really cool card and it really represents the air. I got a Japanese 1998 PM Japanese Gym, the Rockets Trap. I love Team Rocket. It looks so cool. Um, it's got the, that early Cosmos Hollow. It even has a swirl. I paid $10.50. It's only a six. It's an excellent to mint. But again, it's, it's a card from that era, super awesome. And, you know, it's not Pikachu, but I picked up a more Pico VMAX rainbow, you know, from Sword and Shield, super awesome. And it's a PSA 10, $20.50. This card is super beautiful, um, very cool, very reminiscent of the, that era of uh, early Sword and Shield. And it's a 10, so it can never get better as far as PSA goes. Uh, very cool. Happy to have that in my collection. I hope that wasn't a complete rambling mess as I tried to convey my thought process when, uh, you know, researching market value of cards and utilizing the eBay website in order to get some great deals and get the cards that you want. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any thoughts on other videos you'd like to see information on, please let me know. If you thought this was a complete mess, please leave me a comment down below. It was a lot longer than I meant for it to be, but there was a lot of information in there. And again, I hope it was helpful. I hope you have a great week and we'll catch you in the next video.